Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, on this most holy night, we enter into the sacred three days of our Lord's Paschal victory, his death and resurrection. Those who are to be baptized this Easter tide will be made one with Christ, dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. So let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness and according to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sins, and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of his Spirit all our days. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Let us pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. O precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of the faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosed my bonds. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows before the Lord I will fulfil before all people. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. St Paul writes, For I have received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God, and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. 
after he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, so you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. One of the most striking things about the readings that we have just heard is how tactile they are. Jesus shares a meal with his friends and he washes his friends' feet. And in both cases, these are tactile gestures. He breaks the bread. He washes and wipes their feet. These are not light ethereal touches. These are proper physical actions. And accounts of the key moments of Jesus's life often reinforce his physicality. He eats. It's quite a lot about Jesus eating in the Gospels. He drinks. He uh, weeps. He touches the sick and troubled to heal them. He writes in the dust with his finger. He sweats. And he dies. I think most Christians have a strong sense of Jesus as a person, as a real physical person. Probably mostly know what they think he looked like. He's not a magical being. He's not a human unicorn. And many Christians, therefore, feel empowered to address him as friend, brother, even the lover of my soul. And that's why it's even possible, <laughs> at least if you're an American, to ask the question, what would Jesus drive? Answers on a postcard, please. <clears throat> so last week, Father Jonathan talked to us about a depiction of the crucifixion by Salvador Dali, which magnificently depicts the supraworldly nature of Christ's sacrifice. And it's worth going back and having a look at that picture again. It's so magnificent. But I would like to draw your attention to a completely different depiction of the crucifixion, St. Saviour's very own crucified. Now I have here a backup copy, a replica, which we made at the time when the original was uh, reproduced to become the Wayside Shrine because we thought there was an outside chance it might get stolen again or vandalised. And so that's why we have this copy. It's not the sort of thing one normally keeps in one's house. Uh, but I would like to draw your attention to two features of this crucifixion that you may or may not have noticed. Um, if you want to, you will find a very high resolution reproduction of this uh, crucifixion on our website. So you can look at the details in, for yourself at your leisure if you want to. The striking thing about this depiction is that Jesus is so very clearly dead. Not here the suffering, dying Christ who hangs above us in the rude screen in the church, who doesn't appear to be in a huge amount of pain. He looks more like a supernatural being who's very sorry for us, but is about to go to paradise. But this Jesus, this Jesus is very, very dead. 
Now, this is all um, quite striking for me personally because I happen to know the model for this Christ and he's fortunately very much alive. But notice also not just the palpable deadness and the pale lips of Christ, but also the lilies and further down, if I can show them to you, the grapes. I'll just lift up the picture so you can see the grapes. And lilies and grapes are interesting symbols because they symbolise both the crucifixion and the resurrection. Lilies, as you probably re remember, um, are symbols of the resurrection because the tubers die in the earth and then they spring magnificently to life when you least expect them to. And of course, they come into um, flower around Easter. Well, they do in the Northern Hemisphere, not so much in the Southern Hemisphere where we call them Madonna lilies or we use them at Christmas. But neither that, putting that to one side, lilies are a symbol of death and resurrection. We associate them with funerals. We also use them uh, heavily when we want to celebrate a great feast like Easter. Grapes similarly have the doubles, the doubles um, significance. They are both Christ as the vine, Christ whose blood was shed for us, the blood of the Eucharist, and also the vine of which we are the branches. And so while this Jesus is so clearly dead, the rest of the picture assures us that resurrection is imminent. Now, I've always thought of the Mass of Maundy Thursday as the most wonderful of the year. One of the most beautiful things that we do in our tradition. We have the bell ringing, the lovely music, the slow, meticulous ceremony of the foot washing. We have the wonderful procession to the Chapel of Rest and the flowers in it, white and gold, inexplicable splendour, as Eliot says, of white and gold the most beautiful event of the year. But its beauty, I always think, is the greater because we know the dark events that follow it, the stripping of the altars that comes immediately after the Mass, the disciples fleeing in fear, the grim, long agony, the despair and the miserable death that follow from the beauty of Maundy Thursday night. Beauty and pain are inextricably entwined in our faith. And here you can see them depicted in this crucifix and in our ceremonies. On Maundy Thursday, Good Friday and Easter Eve, we reenact them. Jesus perpetually, physically present and eternally transcendent. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Christ, the Saviour of the world. Father, on this, the night he was betrayed, your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who are to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us and welcome all your children into paradise. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, peace I give you. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. ancestors, but we who were redeemed and brought forth from bondage to freedom, from mourning to feasting. We know that as he was with them in the upper room, so our Lord is here with us now. Until the kingdom of God comes, let us celebrate this feast. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel, and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment, that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love he gave this supper to his disciples, to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine 
may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of blessed Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament, you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruits of your redemption. For you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, look upon me. Why hast thou forsaken me? And art so far from my health and from the words of my complaint. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season also I take no rest. And thou continuest holy, all the worship of Israel. Our fathers hoped in thee, they trusted in thee, and thou didst deliver them. They called upon thee and were open. They put their trust in thee and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, a very scorn of men and the outcast of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn, they shoot out their lips and shake their heads, saying, He trusted in God that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him if he will have him. But thou art he that took me out of my mother's Thou wast my hope when I hang it yet upon my mother's breast. I have been left unto thee ever since I was born. Thou art my God even from my mother's womb. O oh, go not from me, for trouble is hard at a and there is none to help me. Many oxen are come about me, but pools of basin close me in on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths, as it were a ramping and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart also in the midst of my body is even like melting wax. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my gums, and thou shalt bring me For many dogs are come about me, and the counsel of the wicked laid siege against me. They pierced my hands and my feet, I may tell all my bones. They stand staring and looking upon me. They part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, thou art my succour, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my dying from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. Thou hast heard me also from among the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brother. 
Magnify him, O ye of the seed of Jacob, and fear him, O ye seed of Israel. O ye have not despised nor abhorred the low estate of the poor. He have not hid his face from him, but when he called unto him, he heard him. My praise is of thee in the great congregation. My vows will I perform in the sight of them that fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. They that seek after the Lord shall praise him. Your heart shall live forever. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. 
Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. <laughs> 